Christmas by me, Ariana Grande, and Megan the Stallion. Here we go. As a Merry Christmas, we cover our notes. We'll be in line for a booster. Line for a booster. Hey y'all, it's Donna. So yesterday I heard on the radio Pfizer is recommending the fourth booster. Not one, not two, not three, but now they are recommending four to protect from this new variant, the Omicron. And even though most people that have shown to have this new variant have already got their first or second um, booster. So it's not even likely, whatever, I'm not going to get into that. So what it got me thinking about, though, is that a few years ago I was annoying everyone with the research I was doing on the subject. But one of the main points I was trying to get across to people is that the schedule they got when they were growing up is nothing compared to what is being given out today. It's nothing compared to, you know, what our grandparents got. So it just, it keeps increasing and it's because of these boosters. And I was trying to explain this to people. I was trying to tell people, hey, by the time your infant turns one, if you're following the CDC schedule, which every pediatrician in America is doing, you know, ACIP gets together and they recommend new uh, vaccines, new boosters, and then the CDC puts it the, on their recommended list, and then all pediatricians comply across the board, society complies, and then they gaslight you and act like you're the crazy one if you have anything to say about this. So anyway, my point is, and I also want to specify, when I say booster, it's it's basically just the same vaccine, and they just give it again and again and again, so they're just giving more doses. So, I think people just don't even believe this when they look at this number 69. This is by the time they turn 18 years old. If they are getting everything on the recommended schedule, which if you're going to the doctor regularly, your pediatrician, you are getting this if you are complying with everything they want you to do. And one of the main points I was trying to get people to understand to have to conceptualize this is to break it down to the baby's first year. So from birth to one year, they will get 25 shots. And that's, it sounds incredulous. Like, I don't even think people believe me. Are they just like, oh, this is an anti-vaxxer and they just kind of dismiss it. Even though they're going to these appointments too, two months, four months, six months, you know, and they're getting all, it just doesn't seem like it. You're not thinking, I don't know what it is. I don't know why people don't understand this or why they dismiss it. This is not secret information. This is not hidden. You can go to the CGC's website and look at the same schedule that I'm looking at here. This is one they actually sent to me. And this last bracket on the end is the flu shot. I couldn't get it all in the frame. But, and you're probably thinking, well, this is up to 18 months. But no, if you count the, see, at birth, they're getting the hep B, and then they go again at two months, they get the hep B, rotavirus, DTAP, hip, polio, pneumonia, and then they go back four months, get those same ones again, except for the hep B. So you can just pause and count them, and you'll see that they'll have everything except for that last DTAP by the time they get to 12 months. And unless you're one of these parents that is asking to space them out, and that's where the through comes in, they'll be like, okay, well, you can wait till 18 months to get the these last set or, you know, whatever, however they schedule that out. But you'll still be getting, if not the flu shot, you'll get 23. So let's be fair and say that, because the flu shot at nine months, they'll give them one dose, and then they'll give them another at a year. For some reason, they like to give two. So, I say all this to say that years ago, when I was discussing all of this and trying to at least get people to rationalize this part of it, that the boosters and the amount that they're adding, and they are continually doing this, it's going to get worse. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Now, they'll have a you know CV vaccine, and they'll have boosters for that one, because with every one comes the boosters. This is what I was trying to explain years ago. And so all I want people to do now, because this is what's interesting to me, and this is what made me think about it. Everyone I know that is pro-vax, quote-unquote, that has went out and got this Varolinosaurus vaccine, the CV vaccine, they're a one and done -er. They're They're done. They think, oh, I went and got my shot, and I'm done. And they don't want to even get a second one. I've talked to so many people that have said this. They got that jab, and they're done with it. They don't expect to go get two, three, four. So all I'm asking of these people is now, can you try to imagine, can you try to put yourself in these babies, these children's shoes? And the, the children should be the most important 
right? These are the ones that we should be protecting the most. But now that it's you, can you imagine everyone in society, or just about everyone, all of your doctors, the CDC, the media, expecting you to go and get 20 in one year. We won't even say 23. We won't even say 25. We'll just say 20. That would be two a month. You go, uh, you know, roundabout. Go to the doctor every month. You get your two jabs, and you have to do it every month. And if you say anything opposing that, everyone will gaslight you and act as if you are crazy. Your doctor will do this to you. Everyone you know on the Internet will do this to you. And you better hope you don't have a reaction because nobody believed that either. I don't care what anyone's beliefs are. I can align with anyone who agrees that we should have the freedom to choose for ourselves what drugs we put in our body. And the last thing I want to mention is aspiration because this is something I didn't even know about years ago when I was talking about this. If you're going to go get one or 69 over the course of years, it doesn't matter. The science does actually seem to be showing that when they don't aspirate, that's where you're more likely to have a reaction because these were designed to go into the muscle tissue. And so when they aspirate, they, they stick the needle in, they draw it back, and if they see blood, they know they hit a vein, right? I mean, there are other, um, like, capillaries and stuff like that. I think it can happen otherwise. But anyway, if they hit a vein, they're supposed to throw it out and start over because it's not supposed to go straight into the bloodstream. And that's where people get the heart inflammation and things like that. Anyway, y'all have a blessed day.